again um, with our keynote, prior to Prioritizing Your Well-Being and Self-Care in a World of Competing Priorities by Ms. Heather Siskin and Anita Perito. Thank you. Okay, uh, thanks very much, Pamela, for that uh, warm introduction. And um, it's an honor for both Heather and I to be here today. So we're just gonna take a moment just to share our screen. And Heather, let me know. Can you see that? No, I can't no. see. That. I'm not seeing. I that see either. like the background. Hold on. We did practice this like 15 minutes ago, and we had it. But let's see. Um. Okay, let's try this once more. There we go. Can you see that now? Yes, it's just yes. not at the uh, first yes, slide. It's not at the first slide. Now you're seeing all the slides, right? Yeah, and it's kind of small, so it needs to. Okay. There we go. Okay. Still oh, good it, there? Yeah, it's and no. Oh. All right. Okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. We're good to go now, everyone. This is a good way to start the morning, uh, getting all the kinks out. So um, it is an honor for both Heather and I to be here today. We're really excited and passionate about self-care, and we want to recognize uh, your commitment to being here and spending your Saturday morning with us and with Heather and myself for the next hour. So as you can see, our keynote today is prioritizing your well-being and self-care in a world of competing priorities. We get it. Um, Life is busy and uh, there are dozens of competing priorities and distractions, not only at work and at home, but even here this morning. So we are inviting you to use this morning as a mindfulness practice. As distractions and other priorities pop up, because they always do, uh, just acknowledge them. Oh, that's one of those distractions that Anita was talking about and just let it go with no judgment. No need to push it away or get angry or frustrated. Just acknowledge it, let it go and return to what's at hand. And to get us in that mindful frame of mind this morning, please join me in this mindfulness exercise. It's one of my favorites because it's quick, easy, discreet, and all you need are your hands. For this exercise, we're tapping into two or more of our sensations, our breath and the sensation of touch. So with your breath, as you're breathing in and out today, uh, just bringing your awareness either to the sensation of your chest or your belly expanding and contracting, or perhaps the sensation of the sound or the air moving in and out of your nostrils. And then the sensation of touch of your fingertips on, on your hands. Uh, this exercise quickly helps us get out of our thoughts and feelings and into our bodies and the present moment. So go ahead and sort of shake off everything that's um, brought you here today. Uh, let go of those to-do lists and, and other things that are um, competing for your attention. Uh, just get grounded, feet on the floor, 
uh, sink into the surface that you're sitting on, lengthen up through your spine and out through the crown of your head and take one palm, one hand, and then take the other index finger of the other hand and bring it to the base of the center of your palm of the opposite hand. And as we inhale, we'll be tracing up the thumb. And as we exhale, we return back to the center starting point. And then we'll trace each of our five fingers. So let's begin together, shall we? Let's inhale up to the tip of the thumb. Exhale down to the starting point. Inhale up to the tip of the index finger and exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up the ring finger and exhale down. And inhale up the little finger and exhale down. And just release the hands into your lap. And now that we are into the present moment and tapping into the best version of ourselves this morning, let me hand the presentation over to Heather to talk about why we are here. Thank you, Anita. That was wonderful and so well needed on this Saturday morning. I'm so glad to have all of you with us this morning. So something brought you to this moment today. It could be that you're here for your in-service hours, or you want to continue on your self-care track, or perhaps you're considering self-care for the first time in your career as a way to enhance your performance. The reasons are many, and I'm hopeful that today you'll walk away knowing more about you and what's next for your self-care routine. We have a couple of objectives that we've set for today's session, and I just want to quickly review those with you. We're going to understand the importance of self-care and the impact ultimately that it has on your work. We're going to create a deeper level of awareness of your challenges and opportunities to shift your perspective and priorities towards increased self-care. Now, there was a national survey that we found, and we thought it would be helpful to share that with you today as well. There are many benefits to self-care, and as you can see here, they include things like greater self-confidence, increased productivity, greater happiness, and decreased health incidence. We could all use this in our lives. Now, let's think about this as the presentation continues. How do your goals align with your actions? This, for me, is a direct link to my personal integrity. Do I do what I say I'm going to do for myself? Or do I break the commitment easier than what I thought I would do for others? Just something to think about and reflect on as we continue on today's presentation. Now we are getting adventurous here today with a poll. We wanna uh, have you communicate to us in the chat. Um, and we're gonna uh, see how much self-care you're putting in right now. So let's take a moment to review and add your answer to the chat by using the assigned number next to your answer. You may be somewhere in between a couple of these answers or all of them in a given week. Just pick the best one for you right now. So number one, self-care. That's the mythical concept where you have time for bubble baths and meditation, right? If only my to-do list could take a spa day. Or number two, I dabble in self-care when my schedule permits. It's like a rare celestial event. When the stars align, I might sneak a five minute meditation between meetings. Number three, I'm on the self-care spectrum somewhere between occasional yoga sessions and remembering to stay hydrated. I call it intermittent enlightenment. Or number four, I've achieved a Zen master guru status in self-care. My daily routine includes sunrise yoga, green smoothies, and moments of pro profound mindfulness. Namaste, productive and relaxed. So let's take a quick moment for everyone to put something into the chat and see where we are. So it looks like we've got some threes, twos, some ones. Okay, well, thank you everybody. Oh, two to three, okay, that's fair, great. 
Thank you. I know we're all over the place, right? Oh, we've got a, almost somebody at the three to four range. We need to know them. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you guys for participating with that. So there's a quote that we found as well. If you don't take time for wellness, you'll need to make time for illness. Now, how many of you can relate to this personally or what you may have seen in a friend or a loved one? Part of filling up your cup is making time for wellness so you don't have to deal with the health issues later due to a lack of prioritizing your self-care. This would be a great quote to refer back to when you're deciding what self-care looks like for you personally. Keep in mind that self-care goals are very personal and meaningful to you and ultimately your why, and we'll dive a little bit in that, into that later on today. Uh, they belong to you and no one else but you. In case you need a few ideas to get started, here are some that may resonate with you today. Number one, take care of your physical and psychological health. You may want to manage and reduce your stress. Recognize your emotional and spiritual needs that sometimes get put on the back burner. Foster and sustain relationships with a significant other, friends, other family members. Think about your financial goals for the immediate needs and your future needs. And achieve balance in different areas of your life. And we'll definitely have an activity to touch on that today as well for you. So thank you so much. I want to share and take a moment to talk about my story um, and what brought me here today. This is both personal and professional, and you can see that those two are blended. There's no way to really pull them apart. I'm going to begin by telling you about my early education experience. I think this is relevant because I truly have grown up in childcare. Now, let me explain. I'm originally from central Illinois, and as a child, I went to a child care center called the Children's Center. While attending there, I actually did a lot of volunteer work. I helped children in the younger classrooms. I helped work in the kitchen. Now, keep in mind, this was a long time ago, so licensing regulations were very different. I helped clean the bathrooms. I was the official front door holder. Best job yet. I would uh, hold the door for parents coming in and leaving, and uh, I definitely used my strength of connectedness. I was there from four years old to seventh grade. And by the time I left in seventh grade, those four-year-olds knew me as Miss Heather. At 12 years old, I had the honor and privilege to move to Miami. And after high school, I eventually made my way to Miami-Dade College at the North Campus Preschool Lab, where I studied psychology and early education. This is where the magic happened for me. I started volunteering at the preschool on campus and eventually became a sub and then a teacher. I really had no idea exactly what I was doing, but it all felt, it felt so familiar and comfortable, kind of like I was back home. I know what it's like to be a teacher working hard all day, long with the children, administration, the families, sometimes even working two jobs and going to school full time. Long, long story short, I went on to work as a curriculum specialist, a director, to a leader running multiple schools, to now running a nonprofit and of course volunteering in the field. I have recently studied and completed my coaching certification, ultimately leading me to you here today. Keep in mind, I also have three children, ages four, 26 and 29, and I'm also a grandma. One of the things I get asked often is, Heather, how do you do it all? Well, there are eight words that I've applied to my life. The first of those is compassion, creativity, curiosity, calmness, courage, confidence, clarity, connectedness. This is all from Everett Constantine's work and it's listed on your resource page that was sent to you. Applying these eight words to my life has allowed me to reflect and to tap into what I need and what my intuition is telling me. My hope is that you will do the same. I realize it's hard to put yourself first and that competing priorities get in the way. Boundaries can be really, really hard to uphold. That is why I need these eight words to help me stay focused in the part of my brain that serves whole body wellness. Here are some examples of how these words connect back to self-care for me. And this is something that you can think about for yourself as well. We're gonna start with compassion. Keep in mind, compassion is recognizing that you're struggling. Recognize that you're not alone. There's a common humanity out there. 
and practice self-kindness. So in regard to compassion, just getting some self-care done instead of working out the way I plan this big workout and it's not really working out, at least I get something in. So that's how I bring compassion to my self-care. Creativity. How do I get self-care to happen? Sometimes I really want to watch Netflix, but guess what? I'm working out at the same time. Curiosity. I wonder what else I can learn about self-care and then actually apply it in my life and see if that would work for me. Calmness. I have this practice of getting back to my breath. I pause to create good choices for myself. Um, and it's something that I'm very connected to right now with a mind-body connection. Courage. Get back up even if I slipped. Plans don't always go as you planned. I mean, for those of you who are in the classrooms every day, you have your lesson plans. They don't always go the way you want them to do, but you just got to keep going and try again. Confidence. Belief that I can achieve the goals I have set for myself. Clarity, my whys and my goals. I need to have clarity on both of those and continue. That's an evolving situation as we change and develop. And connectedness, again, how my mind and body are connected. How I've been looking at it lately is that um, you know, if I need to lean into my mind to help my body, or I need to lean into my body to help my mind, it really I've been using both of them interchangeably. Now, I've also applied my strengths. I want to share with you my top five. My number one is love of learning, kindness, humor, hope, and then appreciation of beauty and excellence. Using these strengths and at times combining a couple to help me through is something I lean into. I'm also cautious that I'm not overusing a strength that can cause its own set of challenges. Another tool I have used is the Positive Intelligence Saboteur Assessment that is also listed on your resource page. I am a pleaser, and because of that, I need to be aware that it is a thing I do. Um, instead of turning outward, I turn, you know, I need, instead I need to turn inward into what I need. It's not about what other people are asking me to do. It's what I need to do for myself and to be very connected to that. And as a pleaser, you can lose that. I do use the eight C's and the via characters to help me with my saboteur as well um, and, and help me get out of that pleaser mode. So you might be asking, Heather, what does this have to do with self-care? Well, we all need help and we can get it when we're focusing and creating boundaries to meet the self-care goals we set. Keep in mind, people pay attention even when they act like they don't. When you create healthy boundaries, you are a role model to others and support them in creating their own boundaries. I even have to say no to things I really want to do so I can stay focused on my self-care. And that's a hard thing for me. I fit in self-care self where I can. Uh, quick meditations. Um, I included an app in your resource page as well that I use. I might go on a quick walk, just being with friends for a moment. It's the steps that lead to bigger things. Be consistent and the small steps will have a big payout for you. I am also consistent with my sleep efforts and eating very clean and healthy nowadays. I am definitely having one of those moments recently where I wish I could just go back in time and change a few things regarding my level of self-care. I have recently been diagnosed with Graves' disease. And the number one thing my doctor said to me was reduce your stress before something else happens to you. Now, I have made some significant changes in my life that allow me to do that. I have no choice but to do it and to enhance my self-care practices. My goal is that you will proactively do what you need to do to take care of yourself first. This will lead you to better uh, both personally and professionally. It will definitely impact every part of you. I want to thank each and every one of you for all you do. Please prioritize your care. You matter. Now, before I turn it over to Anita to share more about self-care and why it matters, does anybody have any questions that they would like to put into the chat or in the Q&A? Um, maybe while we're just waiting for questions there, Heather, I love this photo that you've chosen to put up here. Maybe you can share why you chose that particular <laughs> photo. 
Um, you know, I mean, we all work in, in early education. Um, guys, there's days where I'm feeling like this, right? I mean, you got to have fun. You got to put that that hat on of having the humor and you you heard it's a part of my value system. Um, and I just thought it was perfect. Sometimes you just got to strap in there and just hold on to the wheel and go, right? And so I just thought it was the perfect picture for today. Thank you for bringing that up, Anita. Okay. Okay. So I, we can go ahead and move on, Anita. All right, I'm just looking through and um, just to make it um, easier to get to questions, if you can place your questions in the Q&A and uh, the chat is really busy. So just to make sure that we don't miss anything um, that way. All right, let's move on. Uh, so what is self-care and why does it matter? Uh, Pamela did give us a brief introduction to what self-care is. We're just going to dive into that a little bit deeper. When you personally think about what the word self-care means, what does it mean to you personally? So forget for a moment what the actual definition is and what you think it should be. And think about what the term self-care means to you. So there's no right or wrong answer here um, because it's unique to each of us. And so feel free to maybe share in the chat uh, what you think, uh, what self-care means to you, um, or just make a mental note of it. Just keeping an eye on the chat here too. All right, so when we look at what the actual definition is, and Pamela already shared that this definition this morning, self-care means taking the time to do the things that help you live well and improve both your physical and mental health. And this is from the National Institute of Health. So it could mean things like eating nourishing foods, moving your body, managing stress, sleep and recovery, limiting alcohol, getting into nature. There's tons of different things uh, that help you improve your self-care. And when we get to the heart of why self-care really matters to us, it's usually connected to what we value most in life. So some values or examples of values could be relationships, family, education, making a difference, community, health and well-being, security even. So it, it's really individual um, to your circumstances in life, your stage, your age, or just what's going on. And so I'm inviting you this morning to really think about what you value. Dig down for a second. What's most important to you in life? And why is that? What kind of person do you want to be? And why is that? And are you living into those values? Chances are, perhaps not as well as you like. Uh, Heather and I hear that very often with our coaching clients. So you're not alone there. When we don't do what we believe or feel to be right in our gut, we don't feel good mentally or physically. Knowing what's important to us and why gives us our direction and our purpose. And when we live according to our values, life and often good health flows almost effortlessly. Now, I think that's really important, uh, important enough to say again, when we live according to our values, life and often good health flows almost effortlessly. So we also need to know why these things matter to us. So grab a piece of paper, hopefully you've got one close by and a pen, and let's check in. Do your actions um, match your values? And we're going to use an exercise called the five whys. And the five whys was a system that was originally used by Toyota Motor Corporation. It's very simple. 
and really cuts to the core of why we want something. When we want to accomplish something or if something goes wrong, we can ask one why. Why do I want to accomplish this? So in this case, why do I want to prioritize self-care? Or perhaps it's an aspect of self-care that you want to prioritize. Then with whatever answer you come up with, you ask why to that first answer and so on five times. So I'm gonna give you a, a few moments to, uh, well, a few seconds, I'm not gonna give you moments um, because I don't want you editing out here. I want you to do this quickly um, and go ahead uh, to answer those five whys. And as you're doing that, I'm just gonna share here an example from one of my clients. Um, when I asked her why self-care was important to her, she said, well, I'll feel better physically and mentally. And I asked her, well, what's, why is that important? She said, well, I'll be able to keep up with my kids and the kids that I work with. And I asked, well, why is that important? She says, well, I'll be able to connect with them and make a difference in their lives for longer. And when I asked her why that was important, she said, when I help these people, it ripples out to others, making stronger and healthier communities. And that's powerful. And I think that also shows her values of making a difference, uh, relationships, community, um, and just, yes. So I'll have more energy to do what I need to do on the day. I'm just looking at some of the things coming in through the, through the chat, positive attitude. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to do you first because some people depend on you and sometimes it's harder for us not to assist and give your best. True, true. All right. So this really helps us. I'm just going to go back here for a minute. So knowing your why really um, helps you to identify those values and what's important. And when you're thinking about your why, I'm curious to know that if you were to think a year out from now, would that why change? If you were to think five years down the road, would your why change then? And then if you were to think at the end of your life, thinking of yourself healthy in mind and body at the end of your life, would that why change then? And I ask this because when it comes to self-care, we often put off what we could do today and put the burden onto our future self, potentially overburdening our future self and missing the um, opportunity of compounding interest or the benefit of doing small things consistently. We all know the benefit of compounding interest when it comes to our finances. The same principle applies to our well being. Looking at your overall health, self care, as Pamela had said right at the beginning, it helps us to manage stress, lower your risk of illness, and increase your energy. And when we optimize this energy or vitality, we can bring our full and best energy to the people and the work that mean most to us. So that really means prioritizing our self-care. And those self-care practices are meant to refuel you, helping you to take care of yourself so that you can support those around you. And when thinking of different self-care activities, it's important to think of things that you want to do, not things that you have to do or um, that you should do, but things that you get to do, things that you enjoy. Ultimately, self-care impacts every aspect of your life. And that leads us to the wheel of life. 
The activities that we choose to participate in for your self-care help you achieve balance in the different areas of your life to promote overall wellness. The really great thing about self-care is that when it impacts one area of your life, it also impacts or influences the other areas of your life. Think of it like a series of gears that you pull a lever in one gear and it starts a forward momentum in the other gears. So here we have a wheel of life. Hopefully you have that piece of paper and pen handy again. I'd invite you to draw this out for yourself with the categories of friends and family. If it's more pertinent to you to divide that one in half, feel free to do that. Um, and we've got health, money or finances, career, home environment, fun and leisure, um, and we've got personal growth. So this is a coaching tool that Heather and I often use with our clients to give them an overall snapshot of how satisfied and balanced they are uh, with their current life. We may use it as part of an initial assessment, but more often we use it as a regular check-in. So on a birthday or a work anniversary or when a client is feeling stuck. Um, and this helps to highlight useful patterns to help you learn more about yourself. It helps to raise your awareness and helps you to plan a life that's more satisfying and closer to your personal definition of balance. It al also helps us to clarify priorities. So there's that word clarify or clarity, one of the eight C's that Heather talked about earlier. So it helps us to clarify priorities for goal setting. So let's do this wheel of life exercise together. Now that you've hopefully got that drawn out, here are the instructions. So you're gonna review the eight wheels or the eight categories on this wheel and think briefly of what success or satisfaction would look like in each category. And when I say briefly, think of like one short sentence that would represent that success or satisfaction. And once you have an idea for each of those categories, again, doing it quickly so you aren't editing things out, you're not letting that inner critic get involved. Once you have that uh, definition or what that success looks like, Draw a line across each segment that represents your score in each category. Imagine the center is zero and the outer edge is 10, and then choose a value between one, very dissatisfied, and 10, being satisfied. And again, using the first number or score that pops up into your head, not the number that you think it should be. Okay, so I'll give you a a little bit of time to do that. And Heather, if you're following the chat and the Q&A, feel free to interject with anything as we're going along here. Absolutely, Anita. Okay. All right. So let's just go back. Once you've gotten that new perimeter, um, of the circle here, that actually represents your personal wheel of life. And looking at your wheel, how bumpy is the ride? Uh, I don't think I've ever met anybody so far that's had a perfectly smooth ride. So I would love for you to share in the chat, use an emoji even, you can use your reactions of, you know, how bumpy is your ride? Is it smooth? Is it a little bit wavy? Is it mountainous? Is um, We'd love to uh, hear what, uh, how bumpy your ride is. Oh. So somebody's okay. uh, wavy, Anita. And we got some okay. emojis coming in. Okay. Let's 
Well, for in our experience, most people have quite a bumpy ride. Um, so you are in good company if, if you're on a bumpy ride. And I'm curious if there are surprises for you, because I think that's the interesting thing of doing this wheel of life is it, it creates new awareness for us. And how do you feel about that wheel and your life as you look at this new circumference or periphery? I'd like to invite you to use your intuition here and pick one category that's calling your attention. So I'll just move back to um, that wheel. Oops, how come I can't find it now? There it is. All right. So picking just one category that's really calling your attention. It could be a low hanging fruit um, or it could be something that's gonna be a real stretch for you. Whatever your first sort of gut instinct is, choose a category and think about how you currently spend time in this area. And then think about how you would like to spend time in that area. What would make it a score of 10? And what would a 10 feel like? What would it sound like? What would it look like? And here's the important question. If there was one key action that you could take that would begin to bring everything into balance, what would it be? So remember that visual of the gears, you pull the lever in one gear and it creates that forward momentum. Is there a single action that would really start to pull things into balance for you? And if you were to take one baby step because as humans and as overachieving professionals, we tend to wanna to take a big step, but I'm inviting you, what is one baby step that you could take to move your score half a point higher? What would that action be? And I would love for you to share that in the chat with us. Share your category and what that action step would be. There's a little bit of accountability by sharing, but it's also a bit of that um, common humanity that Heather talked about earlier. It's, it's compassion that we're all in the same boat. So um, what action do you want to take in order to improve your self-care? Are you noticing anything coming up there, Heather? Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of health and family, time, discipline. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of things come up here in the chat. The other thing I would say too, um, I notice as well uh, with my clients is that a lot of times when they look at this wheel, they're they're kind of in shock at the beginning where they're like, oh my goodness, I have been focusing just on my career. And I've left these other things out. And it's a little eye-opening when you think of all the different pieces, right? Um, and then how do you use maybe one part of the wheel to help you with others? You know, um, there are references to the religious and spiritual aspects in the chat as well. And how can you lean into that to kind of help you with the other parts of the wheel? And so these are just all things that we, that we look. Somebody had said uh, losing weight um would be one of their health goals you know guys my first weight watchers meeting was when i was 10 years old right i was the the chunky kid on the playground right and so i've kind of spent my life in this kind of yo-yo up and down and i'm sure many of you can uh resonate with with uh you know my story there um but again it's all a process you just have to keep going and figure out, okay, that didn't work. What's going to work for me? Um, and keep exploring yourself. That's what this journey is all about. Thanks, Heather. Sure. All right. Just a few 
other questions to consider. Now you might want to screenshot this um, slide for yourself so you have these questions. How could you make space for these changes in your life? And what do you need to say no to in order to say yes to this? That's important because for most of us, our plates are already full and we don't want the self-care activities to be one more thing on your plate. So how can you make room for it on that plate? What can you take off? What can you dump, delegate, defer in order to be able to say yes to what's important? And what help and support do you need from others to make changes to bring about more balance in your life? So you might need to recruit an accountability buddy, help from a partner. Maybe it's a healthcare team that you need to surround yourself with or a coach. <clears throat> Who is in that circle of support for you? And then what resources do you need to help you? And very often leaning into that circle of support will help you with those resources. And um, one of the great resources today for you at this Super Self Care Saturday are all of the presenters that will be giving you tools to take away today. So what a gift. Anita, can I uh, add something really quick? Yeah. Um, the other thing I would refer to here as far as your support, think of your own personal board of directors. Who is on your personal board of directors? These are people in your life that you can lean into, go to, get information from, call them, that they're really there to help and support you. So something for you to think about, especially if you've never put any focus there, who is that group? And if you're missing certain people from your life there, um, how can you reach out and gather those people into your board of directors? And then the other thing I would add as far as resources, and this is also a reference to uh, what we, we, we provided you as far as your reference sheet, is uh, a book from Strength to Strength by uh, Arthur Brooks. Um, that book is incredible as far as how it talks about the first half of your life, you're acquiring knowledge and the second half of your life, you're using that wisdom. Um, another really good resource to help you figure out where you are and where you need to go. So I just wanted to throw those in as some helpful resources. Yeah, great, thanks Heather. All right. Um, I'm not seeing any questions in the Q&A right now. Um, so now that we know that self-care is important, or we probably all, always have, but we've just reiterated that, and we know what we want to do, we've got that little action step. But for some reason or other, the majority of us still have a hard time following through on that action. So I'm gonna hand it over to Heather now to dive into more awareness about what gets in the way and some opportunities to overcome those challenges. All right, Heather. Okay, thank you, Anita. Yeah. So we're in awareness now. So what gets in the way? And I would say that this, this is what we do as coaches. We help people get into awareness so then they can move into action. And we spend most of our time just helping people uh, become more aware. Um, keep in mind, uh, and you guys already know this, there are so many competing priorities and it seems like everything can get in the way and all of a sudden the entire day goes and you're sitting here going, oh, my self-care just went out the door today. Um, so how can you lean into your strengths to help make self-care um, and put that at the top of your list? These are your superpowers and what you can lean into to accomplish any goal, especially for self-help. But do you even know them? There's the one tool we use in coaching that helps you determine what those are. And we're going to explore that um, throughout the rest of our session today. So here's some examples of what gets in the way. It could be a lack of time. It could be lack of finances. Uh, maybe you wanted to sign up for a gym or a special class and it's too much right now. Maybe you're taking on too much and you really have to just kind of put it all out and say, what am I going to continue to do? And what am I going to say no to? Um, you might have a difficult time saying no. Uh, you might be a people pleaser. You might 
be a perfectionist. Now, I always say there's no such thing as perfect. It's a made up fantasy world. Um, and so if you're fighting in this perfectionism, it's something to really, really think about. Um, how can you bring that down a notch in order to focus on your self-care? Perhaps you might be overusing your strengths. Um, <clears throat> so my number one, like I said earlier, was love of learning. I love learning new things about self-care, but if I spend all my time there, I'm never going to get to the self-care, right? So that's something for you to think about as you're um, aligning with your goals. And then even underuse of your strengths. Um, we're hoping that today through the VIA character survey that we sent you, uh, that you'll be able to identify with these strengths. Uh, we'll see um, what your results are um, and, and be able to really um, use those as your superpowers. So some things we have control of and other things we don't. But I will say to you that there is a quote that truly helps me in times where I'm making decisions about my self-care. And I will read that to you. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. And that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. So I will get, that's by Victor E. Frankel. I will give you an example of this. Let's say that I am not supposed to be eating right now because that's a decision that I have made for my self-care. And I go to the refrigerator and I open the door and I look inside. Well, what am I doing in that moment? There is a space where I have to choose what I'm going to do, right? And I'm going to choose to shut it again and walk away. Right. So it's taking that pause in that moment. Um, you could make a choice to go run off and do one more thing, clean the house, do the dishes, whatever it is. What are you going to do in that moment? It could even be in the classroom. Um, perhaps you just need a minute um, to just breathe. How are you going to accomplish that? Um, how are you going to call in some help to say, I just need a minute right now to take care of myself? And I know that's really hard to do, um, but it's something to think about as you're working with the children day in and day out. We're going to move right over to character strengths. Um, again, in this survey, it's a really, really helpful tool. These are the positive parts of your personality that can make you feel authentic and engaged in what you're working on. Now you do, sorry, <clears throat> you do possess all 24 of these character strengths in different degrees. Um, and it gives you a unique character strengths profile. Anita referenced the Wheel of Life earlier and how uh, we could use that with clients on their birthday, once a year, checking in on challenges. You can also do the same with the VIA characters and see how they shift for you, um, depending on where you are in your life. Research shows that understanding and applying your strengths can absolutely boost your confidence. You know that these are your superpowers. It can increase your happiness. It can help strengthen your relationships with others. It can help manage your problems. What are you going to lean into right now when you're having a really difficult time? Um, it can help you reduce your stress, uh, accomplish goals that you've set for yourself build meaning and purpose, and improve your work performance. Um, so it's something, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, something to think about even with your peers at work, and maybe they can take this survey. So again, you should have all gotten this link prior to the survey today. If not, I know that they posted it. Uh, you can click on the link provided. Um, again, get the free survey to obtain your strengths. Again, I would encourage you to take it and gather insights from your findings. So at this time, if you have them, please add your top five character strengths to the chat. This is what makes you uniquely you. So I'll give you a minute to do that. <clears throat> For example, think about the work you do with your team. Now imagine a space where your team also takes the survey and you're able to see each other's top five. Keeping in mind someone else's top five gives them energy and essential to who they are um, it would be appropriate to maybe delegate some things that would make them happy, right? So everybody, it's like, that's their superpower. Let them do that. And they want to do it. They like to do it. Knowing each other's strengths allows uh, you to lean into them. And um, again, it's the unique beauty of everyone's top five. So what do you think of when you see these top five of yours? Can you think of a time where you've leaned into them the most? 
what are you aware of now that you weren't before you took the assessment? And you absolutely have it in you to do this, to prioritize your self-care, your, your well-being. You have it in you. What are those tools to help you do that work? So let's pause for a moment. I just want to see if anything is coming up in the chat. Um, we've got a few people. Thank you for, again, posting the link, Pamela. And, and if you haven't had a chance to take the survey yet, um, you can take a, a shot at what are your top five, right? So we have them here on the screen. Um, these are all of the unique 24, um, and they're broken down into the different virtues as well. So you can see here that create if you've got creativity, judgment, love of learning or perspective, those all fall under wisdom. If you've got bravery, perseverance, honesty, and zest, you're under the courage piece. Um, and so on and so forth. Now you could have a, obviously most people have a combination of, of different ones here. Um, and you can also lean into strengths that are not in your top five. That's another key point here to think about. So I'll give you a moment to continue in the chat and placing some of your values there. So I'm gonna reiterate, um, pairing these strengths to help you overcome what's getting in the way. Um, maybe pairing strengths to help you take your next action step. Uh, maybe you might need to lean into some bravery to do certain things or perspective um, to think about that. So again, your top five strengths are considered essential to who you are. They energize you and they are effective in helping you achieve your goals. So Anita, I don't know if you can see how things are going in the chat, if anybody, okay, there we go. I see those. So you see, you see how the, how people have, you know, very different, um, you know, values and strengths that come up. Seeing a lot of love and kindness. Yeah, and that's a huge part of the early childhood world. When, I, when I've done this with other educators, I've done this at Jack and Jill with my entire team. Um, so we have about 90 people on staff and um, it is very interesting to see the different, uh, the different values and, and characters that people hold in the organization. And we do absolutely see a lot of love and kindness that comes up with early educators. Yeah. And also a lot of humanity and justice I'm, I'm seeing here as well as in terms of virtues. Nice. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. I don't know if anybody also um, was surprised by any of their results. Um, you know, what you might have learned about yourself, feel free to just continue to put that in the chat as well. Uh, again, this is what we're hoping for is this gives you a, a different level of awareness about who you are and what kinds of um, superpowers you have in order to accomplish your self goal, your self care goals. All right, Anita, so I will shift it back over to you. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Heather, for that insight into the things that tend to get in the way and also for sharing the opportunities to help us shift our perspective um, and really provide those opportunities for us. So we'll take the next few minutes just to wrap up. Uh, today we've given you a glimpse into what self-care is and why it matters to you personally. We did that quick wheel of life assessment to increase your awareness of how balanced your life is and looked at some of the things that commonly get in the way. Hopefully we've increased your awareness of what your personal strengths are and how to use those to shift your perspective. And um, hopefully this has helped you to shift a little bit more to prioritizing that self-care. Ultimately, self-care is not selfish. It's not a luxury. Um, it's really essential. It's important to take care of ourselves, both physically 
and mentally. And I love this uh, metaphor of um, you can't pour from an empty cup, that you really need to fill it with things that help you to be your best self in order to be able to take care of others. We do live in a world of competing priorities. There's no question about that. And Stephen Covey, I think says it best. You have to decide what your highest priorities are and have the courage pleasantly, smilingly, non-apologetically to say no to other things. And the way you do that is by having a bigger yes burning inside. And that bigger yes really relates back to that why. Remember that five whys exercise that we did at the beginning of the presentation? Leverage that to help you say no to other things. Okay, so some key points here. First of all, um, there's just that visual of those gears reminding you that you pull the lever in one area or in one gear, it starts that forward momentum in the others. And remembering that self-care is important for our own well-being and for the care of others. All of our work will be better if we are mentally and physically healthy. It's important to know that it's okay to fail sometimes at self-care. There's that, com that compassion piece. The conflict between work and life will continue throughout our careers. There's no doubt about that. And at times we may work too much and inadvertently neglect others or ourselves. What's important is self-awareness, monitoring and knowing our boundaries when it's okay to slip in either direction, and when we need to pause, reflect, reassess, and take action, or perhaps rest and recover. So whether you work through the occasional weekend or commit to good enough and done and do something fun, give yourself a break and lean into that strength of compassion and self-compassion. As an early learning education professional, you are a role model for those you teach, mentor, and lead. By creating a foundation of self-care, you're planting the seeds for those around you to be their best selves. And that's that um, photo there of, of the woman blowing on the dandelion, just really planting those seeds um, for others. Mm -hmm. And I think Heather had another visual for us. I do have a visual. Um, it's something I use often and share, and I feel very, very passionate about self-compassion. So I want you to visualize that you have a back pocket. No matter what you're wearing, you always have a back pocket. It's there for you. Um, and at any point where you need to pull in self-compassion, you can reach into this back pocket and pull out a card. It's like the size of a playing card. And it says self-compassion. That way you always have it with you and you can always pull it out of your pocket whenever you need it. And there lies the comfort, right? It is there for you at all times. I also want you to think about how do we always tell children we have to keep our bodies safe right? I want you to think about that too, as it applies to self-care, right? Think about that. How are you keeping your body safe, right? So again, I wanted to throw that in there because um, I know we're always talking to children about safety as well. Thank you, Anita. Yeah, thanks, Heather. All right. Um, now, Heather and I would love for you to share in the chat your biggest takeaway from today. Uh, sharing your pearls really helps Heather and me as we tap into our strength of appreciation of beauty and excellence as we continuously try to improve these presentations. Um, so I'll give you uh, just a moment to do that. And this is also a good time that if you've got any questions, place those in the Q&A.
Yeah, so someone wrote, self-care is important and love yourself. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. Love that. We're, we're really glad that some of these tips uh, will help you today as well, gain some more awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think the hardest part, especially for all of us who are giving and caring for others is to really demand the time that we need, right? At, especially at home. Um, I mean, yes, work is one, one place where it can be challenging to take those few minutes and make sure you take your lunch break and take that time for yourself, uh, but also kind of coming home and, and having everything happening at home, or maybe you have school responsibilities or another job. Um, but I know, I know how hard that can be, but how are you going to lean into your strengths to make sure that you're able to navigate that world to get what you need is, is critical. I, I think someone had said earlier in the chat, like self-care helps my whole day be better. Um, and so that might be a great strategy too, to just try to get it done in the morning, you know, if that's possible, whatever that means for you. Yeah. And I love that of taking the time first thing in the morning, to, it sets the tone for your day, right? Mm -hmm. It's filling the cup early before yeah. you start yes. pouring out of it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for sharing those pearls. We really appreciate that. Awesome. Okay. Um, Heather and I would like to thank all of you um, for taking this time this morning, setting that time aside I know that that that's a big feat uh, when you're when you have a lot of stuff on your plate so just being here this morning um, is a huge step towards self-care and thanks so much for being an interactive audience um, these presentations um, only work be because you um, contribute so thank you for that and thank you to the Early Learning Coalition for providing this opportunity and uh, making self-care a priority for your members. I, I think there's nothing, no greater gift than that. And we would love for you to keep in touch. Um, we've provided our contact information here. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, if there's anything that we can do to um, help you create that self-care plan. Um, we'd love to be able to do that. Anything else that you'd like to add, Heather? I'm just honored to be here. I mean, I've been in the in the early childhood world for over 30 years, and I also have a four-year-old in care, and it's an honor to be here with all of you. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So that's you, it for our presentation today. Thank you so much, Anita. Thank you, Heather, for being with us this morning. Mm -hmm. And as you can see in the chat, in the reactions, everybody are throwing up hearts for your presentation. So thank you so much for being with us this morning. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and make one more announcement. If you look at the bottom of your page, um, you will see a, a little icon that says resources. Um, the ladies have, have kindly provided a resource page for you. I know a lot of you ladies were asking, um, you know, about the books that were referred to. So if you go in the resources, the link to the survey is in there. And also everything that was mentioned throughout the presentation is also in that PDF. You can click on there and download um, the resources that are available to you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies, once again. Thank At you, this time, you. I have one more announcement. Um, we have, we will, I'm sorry, we will be raffling off at the end, end of the session two membership from the Florida Association for Mental Health um, on top of the gift cards that we also have. Okay. And at this time, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to please welcome Miss Aunt, Miss Adriana Moreno Sarate in her presentation, Self-Care Based in Mindfulness. So um, this time, um, Miss Adriana will be doing her presentation in Spanish. So once again, for interpretation, 
at the bottom of your page, you will notice an interpretation button. So um, you will have to select English in order to listen to the presentation in English if you are an English speaker. And if you are a Spanish speaker, please remain on your Spanish line. Thank you, Miss um, Miss Adriana. You can begin. Buenos días. Me escuchan? Sí. Sí. Me sí. Okay. Sí. Sí. Eh, desde el principio me dijeron que la la presentación iba a ser español, pero obviamente yo enseño en inglés. Yo enseño mindfulness, atención plena. En la Universidad de Miami enseño meditación, enseño yoga por más de 20 años. Eh, eh, pero está bien, me alegra poder uh, uh, um, ofrecer la meditación y la práctica de mindfulness en español. Entonces, bienvenidas, bienvenidos. Me alegra que hayan han tomado esta decisión de participar en un sábado por la mañana para aprender más sobre lo que quiere decir cuidado propio. Y de mi parte, eh, yo entiendo que durante toda la mañana van a hablar de cuidado propio, qué es, qué podemos hacer, qué significa, cuáles otras cosas podemos hacer para realmente aprender a cuidar de nosotros mismos. Y mi presentación es más acerca de cómo utilizar en, en, en tiempo real la meditación, la, el mindfulness que llamamos atención plena. So, es, es más acerca de la experiencia, de traer esa experiencia a tu vida y realmente parar un momento para entender qué significa ser mindful, qué significa poner atención, qué significa parar, tomar una pausa y dedicar esos momentos que pueden ser media hora, cinco minutos, un minuto y todavía tiene grandes beneficios para contrarrestar el estrés, el agotamiento, la ansiedad. Científicamente ha sido comprobado con los estudios que aprender a poner atención Atención plena ayuda a contrarrestar oh, todos estos efectos del estrés. Entonces, una de las cosas que quisiera ofrecer inmediatamente es invitarlas a que nos pongamos de pie como para hacer un poquito de transición, de cambiar la energía, de haber estado sentadas escuchando la, la presentación anterior. Entonces, si nos pudiéramos poner de pie donde quiera que estén, Tomen un momento, pónganse de pie, noten sus pies en el piso. Si por alguna razón no te puedes poner de pie, quédate sentado, pero atiende a cómo te sientes. Encuentra lo que te está dando apoyo en este momento, el piso o la silla, si decides quedarte sentado. Nota qué se siente estando de pie, qué cambia en ti. Y trata de mover un poco los brazos, tal vez haces una rotación, moverlos en círculo, para adelante, para atrás, mover uno, mover otro, mover la cabeza de un lado, trata de hacerlo despacio, y luego del otro lado. Y de pronto podemos subir los brazos y podemos bajar los brazos. Volver a subir los brazos y bajar los brazos. Una vez más, estira los brazos, estira los dedos y luego baja los brazos lentamente. Y vamos a, a tomar la silla otra vez, volver a sentarnos. Hazlo despacio, nota lo que significa para ti volver a tu silla. Si tienes algún cojín. Nota cómo te apoya. Trata de dejar tu espalda recta, lo más recta posible. Y nota cómo, cómo te sientes después de ese muy rápido, muy corto cambio. Le das un poquito de energía al cuerpo y algo cambia. Nota lo que cambia. 
puede estar más, más presente. Esa es la intención. Entonces, ¿qué es mindfulness? ¿Qué es atención plena? Es una cualidad con la cual nacemos. Es innato. Nadie nos lo da. Sí lo tenemos que cultivar. Nacemos con esa capacidad de poner atención, de estar presentes, de disminuir un poco el juicio y aceptar el momento presente tal como es. Esa es una capacidad con la que todos nacemos, pero la olvidamos. La vida, las urgencias, la rapidez con que se mueve el mundo a través de nosotros nos ha hecho olvidar de parar, de tomar una pausa, de notar nuestro cuerpo, de conectarnos con nuestra propia respiración. Y es exactamente lo que nos podría ayudar. Entonces, nacemos con eso, nacemos con esta capacidad, con esta cualidad, pero si no la practicamos, si no la cultivamos, la perdemos, la olvidamos, pensamos que no existe dentro de nosotros, que no tenemos esa capacidad y cuando tratamos de poner atención nos cuesta mucho trabajo estarnos en quietud, en silencio, con la intención de estar ahí y ahora, aquí y ahora. Entonces, eh, si hay que cultivarla, hay muchas formas de cultivarla. Y una de esas es hacer una pausa. Y yo las invito y los invito a que en este momento noten dónde están, seguramente sentadas en su hogar, en su oficina. Noten lo que está alrededor, so, usando la visión. Noten lo que les está dando apoyo el suelo, la silla, algún cojín que les dé apoyo a la espalda. Noten los sonidos que están aquí para ustedes. Simplemente los notamos. Todo esto es parte de este momento. Muchas de esas cosas nunca le ponemos atención porque no tenemos la intención. Pero con mindfulness podemos tener esa intención de parar y poner atención lo que está alrededor, lo que escuchamos, lo que nos apoya. Y luego volvemos y entramos más hacia nosotros para poner esa atención a nosotras mismas. Las invito a que ahora escuchen estos sonidos y vamos a practicar unos minutos. Voy a cambiar el sonido para que me puedan escuchar. Está bien si dejan los ojos abiertos, está bien si dejan los ojos cerrados. Entonces, escuchen estos sonidos. Cuando los sonidos, estos sonidos particulares no están aquí más, podemos traer nuestra atención plena, plena hacia el cuerpo. Las invito a que noten cómo se siente el cuerpo donde están en este momento, sentadas, sentados. Noten el piso donde tienen los pies. Traten de no usar el chat por un momento. Simplemente conéctense con lo que está pasando en este momento. ¿Cómo se siente su cuerpo en este momento? Noten los pies. Seguramente habrá sensaciones en los dedos de los pies. En la planta de los pies. Si tienes medias o no, vas a sentir calor o tal vez el frío, el aire acondicionado. Trae la atención a tus pies. 
Y la forma como atraemos la atención es de una forma amable. Es decir, no hay necesidad de criticar nada. No hay necesidad de querer que algo cambie. Simplemente notas, así es como se sienten mis pies. Calor, frío, tensión, la textura de las medias, de los zapatos. Y vamos a seguir escaneando el cuerpo como una forma de estar presentes en este momento. Simplemente mira con tu ojo interno cómo se siente alrededor del pie, del tobillo. Continúa con tu pierna desde el tobillo hasta la rodilla. Simplemente pon la atención. Pon la atención despacio, sin juicio, solamente a lo que hay aquí. Habrá sensaciones de tensión, de calor, de frío. ¿Qué sientes? El momento presente está aquí para ti. Estamos utilizando tu cuerpo como una herramienta para estar aquí. Nota cómo se siente tu rodilla. ¿Cuáles sensaciones hay en la rodilla? Nota cómo se siente dentro de la rodilla. Y si vienen historias en la mente, déjalas que pasen. Dedícate a a la sensación que está en el momento presente. Hormigueo, picazón, calor, frío. Tal vez no hay ninguna sensación. Está bien, eso es lo que notamos. Continúa escaneando tus piernas, tus caderas, Nota el sector de la pelvis, los órganos que hay acá. Solamente les ponemos atención. Notamos qué se siente ahí. Amablemente, sin juzgar, no hay que cambiar nada. Solamente tu atención está en el sector de la pelvis, en los órganos de este sector. Simplemente... Trae tu atención ahora a la espalda baja. Nota cómo se siente. En este sector del cuerpo tendemos a acumular energía y tensión. En este momento, ¿qué sientes? Nota tu cuerpo respirando mientras escaneas tu espalda baja. Continúa con tu, con tu columna vertebral. Sigue para arriba, nota la espalda media, los homoplatos, la espalda alta. Reconociendo cómo se siente alrededor de los hombros. Respira con tus hombros. Tu cuerpo respira y tú pones atención a cualquier sensación, sin juicio, sin querer cambiar nada. Quédate aquí, quédate contigo. Pon atención a este momento. Sigue con tus brazos. ¿Alguna sensación en los brazos? Si la mente se distrae con historias de los brazos o algo que pasó antes, Reconoce, así es que funciona la mente. Va a hacer lo posible por tratar de, de, de agarrar tu atención. Pero tú sabes dónde estás. Reconoce tus brazos y sin juicio siente tus codos, la muñeca, las manos, los dedos. Siempre tenemos mucha energía en las manos. Nota cómo se siente. Calor, frío, hormigueo, pesadez. Lo que sea que sea en tus manos, nótalo. 
Y luego te invito a que notes cómo se siente en el centro de tu cuerpo, alrededor del abdomen, con los órganos internos de asimilación, de digestión. ¿Qué sientes? No juicio. Soltamos el juicio y volvemos con amabilidad a poner atención al centro del cuerpo. Expandimos nuestra atención hacia el pecho. Sentimos los pulmones y el cuerpo respirando. La expansión y la contracción que viene con tu propia respiración. Atiende a tu respiración. Atiende. Estás respirando. Tu cuerpo respira y tú estás presente. No hay que cambiar nada. Simplemente experimenta tu propia respiración en tiempo real. No es pensar acerca de la respiración, sino sentirla, vivirla. Este cuerpo lleno de vida que respira. Nota cómo sientes alrededor del de corazón. Tal vez sientes la palpitación de tu corazón. Recorre ahora parte de la garganta. Dice este, esta parte del cuerpo, a veces mantenemos mucha tensión, contraemos. Sí, mira a ver si puedes sentir el sector de la garganta tal y como está. Reconoce el sector del cuello que conecta tu cuerpo con la cabeza. Siente tu cuello. Y luego trae tu atención completa hacia tu cara, incluyendo la mandíbula. Reconoce si tienes alguna tensión en tu mandíbula. Tenemos tendencias a sostener mucha tensión en la mandíbula. Invita a tu mandíbula a que se suelte un poco, a que haya espacio en tu boca. Nota las sensaciones dentro de la boca. El calor, la sequedad. Siente tus labios, siente el espacio entre el labio superior y la nariz. Tal vez podemos hacer una pausa y notar el cuerpo respirando, notar el momento cuando la respiración entra, el momento cuando la respiración sale. Y seguimos notando la respiración. El cuerpo respira, no tenemos que hacer nada. No tiene que ser más suave, ni más larga, ni más profunda. Esta respiración que tienes en este momento es perfecta para ti, para tu cuerpo. Acéptala. Vívela. Reconócela. Hay un ritmo. Siente el ritmo de tu propia respiración que entra y sale de tu cuerpo. No tienes que hacer nada. Simplemente estás aquí en este momento, sin preocuparte del pasado, sin necesidad de ir hacia el futuro. Estás en este momento experimentando el cuerpo que respira, el aire que entra, fresco, la nariz. Tal vez un poco más caluroso al salir. Continúa escaneando tu cara, tu nariz, las mejillas, los ojos. 
la frente. Siente toda tu cara en este momento. Algunas tensiones. Nota cómo se siente en la cabeza, en la nuca. Nota los oídos y escucha lo que quiera que está aquí para ti. No tienes que decidir si te gusta o no. La invitación es a escuchar lo que es parte de tu conciencia. Tal vez hay ruidos en otra parte de tu casa o la oficina donde estás. Tal vez hay ruidos afuera o sonidos específicos. Simplemente escúchalos. No reacciones. Simplemente responder con atención plena. Reconocer, estos son los sonidos de este momento. No tengo que decidir si me gustan o no. Ahí está el juicio. Y luego escuchamos. Tal vez hay silencio. Lo que quiera que esté aquí para ti, escucha. Sin reaccionar en automático. Paramos, escuchamos. Y ahora te invito a que traigas tu atención plena a todo tu cuerpo. Siente tu cuerpo como un todo, desde la cabeza hasta los pies. Completo. Así como está. Aceptamos este cuerpo así como está, tal y como está. Y le damos la bienvenida. Así como está. En este momento, con atención plena, sin juicio. Y ahora las invito a que escuchemos otra vez estos sonidos como forma de hacer transición. Quédate con los sonidos. Y cuando estén listos, listas, si tenían los ojos cerrados, tomen un momento para abrirlo, para notar cómo se sienten en este momento. Y ahora las invito a que compartan si tienen algún comentario, alguna pregunta o alguna reflexión acerca de esta práctica de mindfulness o atención plena. Me siento relajada, dice alguien. Muy relajada, me gustó. Qué lindo poder tomar este tiempo. Eh, relajarse. It's hard for me to do it. Paz. Gracias, de verdad. Lo necesitaba. Uh, calma, relax, traer paz, tranquilidad, relajarnos, super relaxing. <ríe> ok, esos son bastantes comentarios. Si hubiera una pregunta, con mucho gusto, me liberé, me siento relajada, gracias. Me alegra mucho. Tuve que tomar una decisión acerca de qué hacer y entiendo que durante toda la mañana van a estar hablando del cuidado propio, de lo que llamamos self-care. Pues esta es una forma de cuidado propio. Esta es una herramienta para conectarnos sin ningún juicio, ponernos atención, 
¿A qué ponemos atención? A lo que ya está aquí. No estamos haciendo historias, no estamos queriendo nada, no estamos pensando en el pasado, lo que nos pasó, lo que no nos pasó. Simplemente aquí, el cuerpo siempre está en el momento presente. El cuerpo es una herramienta para entrar al momento presente. De la misma manera que es la respiración. Algunas personas tienen un poco de dificultad en conectarse con la respiración. Cuando vivimos muy nerviosos y muy ansiosos. Entonces la opción es conectarte con tu cuerpo. Sentir el cuerpo, el calor, el frío, la tensión. Lo que sea que está pasando en los pies, en las piernas, en el cuerpo sentado en una silla. Nota esto. Esa es una manera de llegar aquí y ahora y dejar pasar los pensamientos que nos atormentan, que nos hacen sentir agotadas, cansadas, ansiosos. Todos esos pensamientos solamente paras en este momento, te conectas contigo misma. Puede ser a través de la respiración, como digo, a veces no es tan fácil. Entonces el cuerpo mismo, tu propio cuerpo, tus propias sensaciones son tu herramienta más importante para conectarte con el aquí y ahora. Y, con, y saber, preguntar de pronto, ¿cómo estoy? ¿Qué necesito? Parar un momento y escucharte. Tal vez tienes sed. Tal vez tienes que pararte, caminar dos pasos, cinco pasos, cambiar la energía y volver a, a continuar haciendo lo que tengas que hacer. Entonces, eh, podemos hacer mindfulness con prácticas de media hora, de una hora, aprender a meditar, hacer más yoga, caminar, comer con mindfulness, comer poniendo atención, un poco más de espacio, con, con atención plena, sabiendo lo que estamos comiendo, cómo se siente, cómo sabe, tal vez de dónde viene lo que comemos. Cuando traemos la atención plena a todas las actividades de nuestra vida, vamos a enriquecer nuestra vida. Y no necesitamos nada más que querer hacerlo y aprender a parar, a tomar estas pautas. Entonces, esta ha sido una experiencia de mindfulness. A través de la mañana, como la presentación anterior, tienen muchas cosas muy parecidas a lo que estamos haciendo, pero esta es la experiencia misma para la cual les invito que no se requiere de una hora, de media hora, de ni siquiera diez minutos. Tu compromiso es parar. Si es un minuto o unos segundos, te va a favorecer. El momento que sigue después de hacer la pausa y conectarte contigo misma va a ser completamente diferente que si no haces la pausa. Y ahí está el efecto de mindfulness que se va a extender a tu vida, a cualquier cosa que digas, que hagas, como te relacionas con los niños a los que enseñas. Traemos mindfulness con nosotros y lo que experimentamos es diferente. Entonces, esa es mi invitación. Si hay preguntas, por favor. Eh, yo no puedo leer todas las preguntas. Si hubiera alguna pregunta que quieren que conteste, con mucho gusto. Pamela. Hay una. Yes. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> yes. Um, Adriana, we have a question. What is the best time to do, to do this exercise? Excellent. Es una pregunta magnífica. Entonces yo digo, si tienes tiempo, pues es una manera muy efectiva de relajar el cuerpo al final del día y pasar 5 o 10 minutos recorriendo tu cuerpo sin juicio, con amabilidad. Pero también es una práctica que podemos hacer en un minuto antes de empezar el almuerzo, antes de hacer la, la, el almuerzo para los niños. En un momento, tomar un momento y notar cómo te sientes respirar, conectarte, aceptar cómo te sientes. Tal vez estoy angustiada, me doy cuenta cuando paro de que estoy haciendo las cosas muy rápido. Entonces, ahí tienes una 
un mensaje de que tienes que parar, de que tienes que tomar una respiración más profunda. Entonces, al final del día, en la mañana, pero mi invitación es inserta mindfulness en tu vida, en todas las cosas que haces. Un minuto aquí, un minuto allá, y cuando tengas tiempo, júntate y haces un body scan. Hay muchas, muchas uh, aplicaciones en el teléfono para seguir un body scan. Yo tengo unos, eh, eh, Christine nos puede poner online. O sea, hay, hay muchas cosas que podemos hacer efectivamente y escoger parte del día. Cuando hacemos una práctica regular, eso se va a extender a tu día. Porque los efectos se quedan. El, el cerebro cambia cuando aprendes a parar. Yeah. Esa es la intención. Yeah. Emily, you want to close us out? Adriana, thank you so much for this. This is so helpful for all of us. Um, we are very, very grateful uh, to you. I do want to remind everyone that we will be uh, re, um, posting this entire session, all of these sessions on the PDI website. You'll be able to revisit this and the resources resources are at the bottom. We will share any resources um, to link you to Adriana um, definitely because we we we're getting those questions and so we know that you you are interested and we want to make sure that you get um all the information um that she has provided you with as well as all of our presenters today thank you pamela back to you thank you anna thank you adriana for such a wonderful session i hope you ladies you you gentlemen are as refreshed and feeling as peaceful as i feel right now